Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of the Living. Um, if there's noise in the background, I apologize. My friends are watching Hannibal in the background. Um, don't mind that though. Uh, it's Arbor Day though. Arbor Day is a relatively new holiday in the kingdom. And is based less on ridiculous old traditions and more on caring for Mother Earth. Began in the pirate community and due to their persuasive leaflet campaign and moderate use of force, caught on in the kingdom. Customary to spend the day thinking good thoughts about the earth and the environment and to do the to go to the pirate's arbor arboretum and plant a sapling or two. Customary to go to the pirates of the arboretum and cut down last year's saplings to make more ships for the environment. So where do you head it over here? Uh, plant a tree. You walk to the arboretum and run smack to the swappy pirate. A little awkward since you stick to him briefly before you can pry yourself off. Hey, Swabby, he says. I already gave you a bag of saplings to plant. Why aren't you carrying it with you? How do you think that makes me feel? Walk away as the pirate's eyes start to tear up. What a savvy pirate. So he gave me... Uh, this. Let's equip that. Sure. Fellowship of the Fudge. Hack through the Arboretum. Arboretum. Hear voices coming from a hollow tree. Peep through a knot hole and see a group of tiny elves holding a kind of council. It is decided then, one of the elves says, the only way to destroy this batch is to throw it into the ovens of Key Blur where it was forged. It'll be a long and dangerous journey. No, don't you see? Another elf says, rising to his tiny little feet. We could use this batch to its power for good. Think of all the tasty cookies we could bake with its arcane power. Nothing good can come from something so corrupt, the elf replies. Its power would consume us and we would be known as the key blur elves doomed forever to make the cookies of evil that doesn't sound so bad actually another elf says what do you say we vote on it keep away and plant your sapling buzzing with mystical energy nice the raven haven hike across the orobarium looking for the place to plant it see storytelling of ravens it's like when a bunch of ravens gather around one raven who tells them a story if they like the raven story they all fight away together if it doesn't go over they fall on the one raven and peck them to pieces Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. The Raven in the Middle says, You love this one. This is a story about all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. Heard it, one of the ravens says, clicking its beak hungrily. Okay, right, never mind. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three lovely girls. Why do we care for a human female and her brood? <laughs> all right, then. This is the story of a girl who cried a river and drowned a whole world. <laughs> Down the whole world, eh? That sounds promising. Think of the feasting we do on the drowned, bloated corpse of the humans. Continue. <sighs> oh my fucking God, that's funny. You shudder and find someplace else to plant your saplings. You'll certainly never go near a raven nevermore. The wolf at your door. Plant your sapling and walk through the arboretum. Follow a little path through the trees and end up at a cute little brick house. Walk up to the front door, you hear a loud wheezing noise and you almost trip over a wolf flying in the path. Rolls over, gasping for air. Jeez, what happened to you, you ask? Stops, uh, stops gasping and looks at you. Moss in here to solve a problem. Says, I'm a wolf. That's what I do. There's three pigs in the house that need to be cleared out before the homeowner's wife gets home. She comes and sees those pigs. She's getting a divorce. No child separation, no working things out, a divorce. So I'm trying to huff and puff and blow the door out, but I'm going to move out or I breathe on it. I uh, can't imagine why that didn't work, you say. Uh, you ain't got nothing to worry about, wolf. I'm, uh, I'm on it. You bum rush the door and hit it with your shoulder, knocking off my sensors. Get in there and chase those piglets out and wait for the cavalry, which will be arriving directly. That's all you gotta, that's all you gotta say, Arr, the wolf says, and races inside, growling furiously. Feel mighty for breaking down a door, just like in the movies, and we got five beef. This is, there's a lot of these, huh? Wow, there's a, woof. I don't know what that does. Maybe I'll check it out later. grab some of that um so i've been grinding some of my stats but mostly i've been getting the items for the spooky raven quest um i've had quite enough on-screen shenanigans so i'm just gonna yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and get over there let's read this before we go this is a big sack full of saplings for the mighty crotchet pine. So named because it's always needling people who get too close. You know, so named so named because botanists love a bad pun as much as the next guy. All right. So, back to the suspicious masonry. You mix the mortar ingredients between uh, into a nasty smelling paste and smear it on the brickwork with the mortar. Smoke pours from the cracks between bricks as the solution does its work. Wall collapses, revealing an eerily lit chamber beyond. 
Hunched and crooked figure stands by a rough stone altar surrounded by candles and arcane implements. Could this be Lord Spooky Rape? Oh. It is. All right. Lord Spooky Raven, I presume. You say as you enter the summoning chamber. He moves his mouth as if to reply, but all that emerges is a puff of dust. He looks as old and desiccated as an old desiccated corpse. He must have used ancient and unspeakable and forbidden magic to keep himself alive. You think he would have used it to keep himself in better shape. If you'd have time, but you don't, as you'd... You'd think if you had time, but you don't, because he's already preparing to attack you. It's the jump on me. He twiddles his fingers, and the room fills with a noxious green fog. You sputter and gag. Ew. Oops. Oh, fuck. He twiddles his fingers, and spooky hands emerge from the darkness. They smack you repeatedly and spookily. Um, let's just exp... Uh... Let's try one of these. Well, that was enough. Cool. Um, we got muscularity points. Got the Eye of Ed. And Spooky Raven's ear trumpet. Eye of Ed. Gem from the Staff of Ed. Lord Spooky Raven must have been using its peculiarly en energy-focusing properties in his ancient unspeakable rituals. Cool. And Spooky Raven's ear trumpet. Eh, hey, what? I can't hear you. It's an accessory. Accessory. Gives you 25% more combat initiative. Oh. You enter the summoning chamber. Air is heavy with evil and otherworldly whispers echo melodramatically in your mind. One of them has the dame, name of the demon you would summon. Um. Okay. Excuse me. That's fine. That's fine. Um, Staff of Ed. Okay, let's craft Eye of Ed with the Staff of Ed almost. Staff of Ed, nice. Okay, so do I equip it? Or is it a key item? Let's go to the recent items. Staff of Ed, here it is. This is the complete Staff of Ed freaking finally. No kidding, I've been on this quest for like months. Actually. Um. Ugh. Yeah, let's just eat cream cheese. Why not? Drink a vodka cranberry. Why not? You know? Just why not? That's all. All right. Let's head to the pyramid. Step inside the small pyramid. Yada, yada, yada. You locate, the sock you locate the socket on the floor where the staff fits and plug it in. Sunlight streams in through a hole in the wall and hits the eye of Ed, which focuses the light into a concentrated dot on the model. Move closer to the model and find exactly where the dot and therefore the buried pyramid lies and... Uh... <laughs> is that smoke? The model bursts into flames and is consumed, leaving behind a pile of ash and a hidden trapdoor. You open the trapdoor <laughs> to find a flight of stone stairs which descend into an ancient buried pyramid. This isn't quite what you expected. Back in? Oh. Well, shit, we're here. Okay, I think this is everything, right? <laughs> There's a guy there. Wow, we finally made it. It's been a couple of months. We're finally in there. Oh, you're fighting a tomb servant. Servants of the monarch who was buried in this pyramid. Before the days of yore when a monarch died, his servants would be buried alive with him because it was widely believed in the afterlife. People enjoy listening to a lot of screaming and scratching. The guy was angry when they buried him and his uh, mood hasn't improved much in the thousands of intervening years. He advances upon you. Gives you a three stooges eye poke. It hurts a little more because his fingers are just pointy bones. Uh, let's hit him. Cool. Let's, uh, let's actually hit my skills up and let's hibernate for an adventure. Okay, back to the lab again. A wheel, how fortunate. <laughs> Funny. Leaning up against the walls of the pyramid, you find a crumbling carved wooden wheel with a square hole cut in the middle of it. Let's take a look at that. Why don't we? Hmm. Crumbling wooden wheel. I thought it would be a quest item. Carved wooden wheel, it's on its last legs. It's a quest item. Okay. Into the upper chamber. Okay, so I guess we're just grinding here. Oh, another wheel. A tomb bat. 
Tumbat. Tumbat. Have you ever seen a mummified bat? Well, you've never seen one of these. It's a flock of bats that live in this pyramid for a long time. So long, they've learned to imitate other creatures here by mummifying each other. This is born a little bit. In fact, they for, uh, performed the mummification before this subject shovels off its furry black little mortal coil, but the effect earns them a lot of points if for no other reason than the extreme creepiness. Long story short, you're being attacked by a big mummy bat. Cool. We got mummy wrappings. Nice. You're fighting Liddy Kitty. <laughs> Cute mummified kitten with a pink bow on her head. She's cute at first, but the more she stares at you with those blank soulless eyes and a chalk white mouthless face, the more creeped out you get. The fact she's trying to claw you to ribbons doesn't help either. She stares at you. Stares. Stares as though she can see to the core of your very being where all your fear and pain is locked away. It's spooky. Nice. Holy shit. Leather cat skin, ancient magi wipes, ancient vinyl coin purse, and mummy, mummy wrappings. All right. Got a miscellaneous item. Clear plastic coin purse with the little kitties. Liddy kitties. Oh, hello kitty. Clear unblinking face on it. A coin purse that did blink would be creepier. Oh. Enter the coin purse in your hand. I don't know where a guy wearing thick glasses and a tie approaches you and says, Holy cow, those are some rare and valuable coins. What do you say it tangles off your hands? Does this seem like a fair price? Before you can respond, he shoves a stack of meat in your hand and disappears. You hope you got a good deal. All right. Yo, wigga wigga, I live in a tizoom. Sorry about that. Oh, mummy wrapping. Boo. Filthy dried bandages used to hold mummified bits of some inside of someone or something. Tied in a little bow, but it's not a very good bow, so you untie and put it in back pocket. I imagine it's something that you would uh, do. Thick preserved skin from a mummified cat. There's more than one way to get this. Foil wrap pack of magic soap paper napkins for when you got in curse all over yourself. Lil, uh, Liddy Kitty stares malevolently at you from the front of the package. It cures shit. Cool. All right. Back to the episode. Oh, doobie doobie down down. Down doobie doo down down. Push a lid off a sarcophagus, really, for no reason. You just felt like defiling another tomb and discover a hidden stairway to a deeper level of the pyramid. Wow, nice. Uh, while I'm here, let's just double check. Okay. 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 Oh my god, I never did that, did I? Why doesn't it show up here? That's basically how I remember everything. Well, let's go to my quest log, which is actually a log. Oh boy. <laughs> I can't believe I still haven't done all of these. It's... How's Sudaya doing? Let's change that name, huh, buddy? Chadwick. All right. Cool. Nice. All right, let's go to the middle chamber. You're finding a tomb-asp. Tomb-asp. Before the days of yore, the monarchs of loathing were buried with huge urns full of grain for the use in the afterlife. People doing the burial, knowing the grain would be a temptation for thieves, trained a species of asp to hide in the urns and protect the grain from grief fingers. Archaeologists have deciphered an ancient document that seems to be a set of instructions for the preparation of one of these traps. Oh boy. It translates as follows. Put a hole in the urn. Put an asp in the urn. Get the thief to open the urn. You've just performed step three, and you figure step four is either fight this thing or get poisoned, maybe both. Technically, it would be envenomed, but that's okay. Tomb rat. Tomb rat. For the days of your monarchs of loathing were buried with huge stores of grain, yada yada. Oh, currency within the afterlife. It was believed the road to pay with gold, and that it was solid gold toll booth at every inspection, so it was vitally important to carry plenty of grain if you wanted to get anywhere in the afterlife. Governing the afterlife, can they use the grain to fund road improvements? That seemed a little suspicious. I mean, the road is made of solid gold. How can you improve that? Oh, right, the rat. Because of all the grain, uh, the tomb's filled up with rats. So you get the... This isn't one of them. He gnaws on me. We got leathery rat skin. Yay. Manji hide him a tomb rat, complete with fleece and patches of missing fur. One of the nastiest things you've ever seen. Why did you even pick it up? It coils itself inside the urn and springs in the air, taking the urn with it. It lands on top of your head, the heavy urn... Causes you a great deal of unearned pain. 
so that towards you, intent on sinking its fangs into your tender flesh. Before it can reach you, a window to another dimension opens up, and a badge's paw reaches through and grabs it. Another snake takes its place. Unidentified. Ugh. It's food. Strip of ancient dried meat. You're not sure what kind of meat, because after a thousand years, all starts to look pretty much the same. You wonder if you're chewing on some ancient emperor. Strengthen his muscle point of level. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I'm so high of a level. Torg. My man. We've learned the precision of a penguin. Let's see what that does. Oh, it's a passive. Good. Uh, more crit chance for each gallon of fury. Notice that pigeons dive in frigid water. They land exactly where they intend to. It's because you aren't watching carefully enough. But now you'll be able to because of the extra precision provided to you by your newfound similarity to penguins. That's funny. Uh, so this gives me 5% more extra crit chance. That's pretty solid, honestly. And then let's let's get Musk of the Moose anyway. Wow. We're almost max level. Concentrate very hard. You're able to exude mus moose musk from your pores. Smell of musk will make you likely to encounter monsters when adventuring. Interesting. I need the opposite of that. And the tomb servant, he walks to you like an Egyptian and then beats the hell out of you like a Mesopotamian. And we got a mummy wrapping. Nice. Wow, Chadwick is going crazy here. Oh, we got ancient protein powder. Let's take a look-see at that. Mix it into a glass of water and choke it down. Beefcake. I want to remember what this does. Less item drops, less initiative, but it lets me breathe underwater. Right. Right. Okay. Further down, doobie doo down down. Find a tall stack of canopic urns. After breaking them in a wealth play single throw of a baseball, they were stacked in, you notice they were stacked in front of another set of stairs leading down. Cool. I am going to cheat on this upcoming puzzle because I, uh, didn't like it at all. Move the first chamber into the second, where the stairways concealed under a pile of rubble. Huh. Okay. I guess we're just going through again. Tomb ratchet. Ratchet used for loosening and tightening things inside tombs. It's unclear why the rat was carrying it. Maybe it's a typo. Okay, for the Doobie Doom down, and then under control adventures, lower chambers and control room. Okay. Cool. Oh, we got a Canopic Jar. Wow, I have a lot of fucking damage. I expect myself to fight ghosts and shit, but uh, it turns out that's still really solid. All right, Canopic Jar. Oh, we got Ancient Spice. Ancient spice. Ancient pile of valuable and delicious spice. That's what it is. Not the dusty remains of long disintegrated organs. Not at all. Definitely spice. It weakens enemies and it deals a bunch of damage to them. Oh, on a control. After setting fires to a stack of mummies piled up like cordwood, you discover a door that had until recently been concealed by a pile of unburned mummies. Put your head through it and leads to a room with a panel in it. It's like the future meant the past and they had a baby and that baby was a weird stone panel control room. Okay. Rotate it three times. Hold on, wait. I need two ratchets, and I need wheels. Use a wheel. Put the wheel in the peg, give it a good yank. Grinding from the peg, and then... Since the quiet grinding was the wooden wheel disintegrating. Crap. Okay. So rotate it three times. Oh, I've broken it again. Okay. Then ratchet it. Stamp the ratchet on the peg, and then in half as you turn it. Dang it. Well, we finally reached the pyramid. I'll uh, grab that first encounter, and then I'll cut the episode. Okay, then go to the lower chambers. 
We got an ancient bronze token. Nice. Hmm. So I guess I'm just going to have to uh, grab some more of these then. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll adventure off screen, uh, drinking and eating as needed. And then I'll see you guys in the next episode. We finally did it. That We finally completed the Staff of Ed. I'm fucking pleased. Uh, that's been Kingdom of Loathing. That's the episode. Thanks for coming by. I've been Alfred. And another reminder that this game is always free to play. Thanks for coming to see me.